Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. I'll dispense with the usual introduction here with the aim of trying to keep this video as short as possible. So let's get down to business. In the previous video, we obtained our Let's Encrypt signed TLS certificate and key via the Certbot utility and we pointed Dovecot and Postfix, which are our IMAP and SMTP servers, to where this certificate was placed by Certbot on our system. At the start of that video, I mentioned that it would be the final configuration video in this video series. And though that is 99% correct, there are a few additional lines we need to change in the Postfix master configuration file, which we'll deal with here in this video. I left these final changes out of the last video and put them here instead because they are basically boilerplate changes that have no direct relationship to the certificate acquisition process we performed in the previous video and I basically didn't want to confuse the two things so I kept them separate. So this video will be nice and short hopefully. We're going to first make a few changes to the configuration file as mentioned and then we're going to show that something called start TLS is enabled for our server. Okay, so you might be wondering what is start TLS? Uh, so far in this course, I haven't really explained it, but I have mentioned it a couple of times. Start TLS is an email protocol command that tells an email server that an email client like Thunderbird or Outlook, whatever you use to access your emails, wants to turn an existing insecure connection into a secure one. I chose to use start TLS for this project because it makes the process of setting up an email server much easier. It means we don't need to establish separate ports for our SMTP and IMAP servers to enable encryption. It keeps the configuration a heck of a lot simpler. We can instead simply use port 25 and port 143 and have start TLS turn those into encrypted connections for us. The downside of doing this is we do need to make sure that encryption is enabled, which is why we're going to do why we're going to do what we're going to do in this video, which is to check start TLS is available. And then in a later video, we're going to check the headers of our emails to make sure that our emails are being encrypted. Okay, let's get over to my desktop then, where we're going to make these boilerplate changes to the, to the configuration file uh, and where we're going to confirm that start TLS is a service available to us. Okay, here we are on my desktop as per usual. I'm going to use PowerShell as I always do, and I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi using my SSH alias Pi. I'm going to clear my screen to stay organized. And now I'm going to edit the main postfix configuration file, and I'm going to do so using the nano text editor. So I'm going to type in sudo nano slash etc slash postfix slash main dot cf because that's the main configuration file for the Postfix server. I'm going to press enter. Okay, so this file should be very familiar to you. If I page down a little bit, we'll see some familiar lines that we've added previously. You'll see SASL authentication lines here at the bottom that we added in a previous video and further up the hello or the EHLO restrictions that we put in also in an earlier video. And if I page back up again to near the top, you can see the certificate file and the key file lines that we changed in the last video. Okay, so it's up here that we're going to make our final few changes. So I'm going to press enter here to create a space and I'm going to type in smtpd underscore use underscore oops, underscore tls equals yes. You'll see that line is very familiar. It's almost exactly the same as the line above it. The difference is that SMTP and SMTPD are two separate daemon processes. One is for outgoing traffic and one is for incoming traffic. So what we're doing is saying I'd like both incoming and outgoing traffic to use TLS. So we've added that line and now we just need to add one more. I'm going to create a space up here for it. I'm going to type in SMTPD underscore TLS underscore received underscore header equals yes. I'm now going to add a comment so that we know what it is for future reference. Allow TLS encryption, oops, encryption information in the email header. So allow TLS encryption information in the email header. Now, when I was first setting up email servers a long time ago, 
I didn't have this line set and it was very difficult for me to know when emails being sent were being encrypted. And this is really the missing piece of the puzzle. With this line in place, when we send an email, they will be included with a header that will include the TLS encryption version, which hopefully will be 1.3 or above in our case. And by having this line set, we will therefore be able to be absolutely sure that our emails are being sent from our client encrypted. Without this line, we wouldn't know, or certainly wouldn't know as easily. So make sure that's set, save it, and exit out. Okay, so that's completed the configuration. The next thing we need to do is to restart Postfix and Dovecot. Um, I'm restarting Dovecot just for completeness. I don't think I actually need to, but I will do just to be sure. But I'm certainly going to need to restart Postfix because I've changed the Postfix configuration file. As we've seen before, you can restart the Postfix and Dovecot services very easily. So I'll do this quite quickly using sudo service postfix restart, enter. And the same thing, but with dovecot instead. So I'll use the up key on my keyboard to get the last command and then type in dovecot and press enter. With that done, we now just want to check that the configuration changes we made are valid and haven't broken anything. And the best way to do that is to check the status of the service. So I'm going to press up on my keyboard and I'm going to change restart to status so that it says sudo service dovecot status. And we can see by the green active running line up there that everything is running as it should. And now I'm going to do the same thing for postfix. I'm going to change it to status. And there again, the settings are okay. So because we changed the settings for postfix, this one is particularly important. It shows that those settings have been accepted. Okay, I'm going to clear my screen to keep things organized. Right, so we're just going to take a quick pause from our desktop and have a conversation about port 25. At the start of this course, I mentioned it would be beneficial if you watched my hosting of a WordPress website video series first. Well, this is another example of where it would have helped if you had, because before we can confirm Start TLS is available, we need to make sure that port 25 is open on our router. In video 10, of my hosting of a WordPress website video series, I cover how I do this on my router in more detail. So if you need a refresher, please do take a look at video 10 of that series, and I'll put a link in the description below. Although I do recommend you do run through the whole series because it will help in general with understanding how to set up an email server. In a nutshell, you need to log in to your router as an admin and you need to map your NAT firewall such that external port 25 is equal to internal port 25. Without doing this, the command we'll use in a moment at the command line to check that start TLS is available externally will hang and it won't work. It's actually a good way of checking that your port opening on your NAT firewall is working as it should. So before you go any further, log into your router and open port 25 to the world. Okay. Let's head over back to the desktop and confirm that Start TLS is indeed available to us. OK, so we're back over to my desktop again, and now we're going to run the command I've been talking about to check that Start TLS is indeed available. So type what I type, nc space mail dot followed by your domain. So in my case, single hyphen entity dot com, but yours will be your domain, space, and then it's the port number. You could use 25 or you could use SMTP. I'll be using SMTP. Press enter. OK, so basically it's made a connection for us. Then we just need to provide an EHLO, which we've talked about in a previous video. It's basically a way of identifying our server. So you're going to now type in your domain. So EHLO space followed by your domain. So for me, it's single hyphen entity dot com. Of course, yours will be different. Press enter. And what we get here is a list of functionality. And the important one, the reason for doing all of this is the fact that you can see here, start TLS is indeed available. That's what I wanted to check. And that's it. 
Now, if you ran this command and it hung and you got no response, so this was your response just here. If you ran this command and you didn't get this and none of this happened, that's going to be almost certainly because your command here was unable to reach your postfix server. And that is almost certainly because your NAT firewall mapping hasn't worked. So you need to make sure that port 25 is indeed available uh, from outside of your network. Okay, that's it, we've finished. The next video is going to be quite an exciting one. We're going to set up a client in order to actually be able to send and receive emails using a email client. In my case, I'm going to use Thunderbird because it's available and anybody can download it and use it. But I will also talk about how you can get Outlook to work as well. This is certainly not the end of the journey, however. All of your emails are going to go to spam boxes and won't be trusted at this point. But it is without doubt one of the most exciting parts of this journey. You will actually connect to your own email server that only you own and is yours uh, with a common uh, email client and you'll see the pieces starting to fall into place. So I'm really glad you've got this far. It is very exciting. At least I find it exciting. Um, if, you, <clears throat> if you do like this video, please click the like button beneath the video. It takes you a fraction of a second and I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my course. I really appreciate a subscription. I love it when I see a new subscriber appear. And finally, I've got a Patreon account now and any donation you can make to the work I do would be much appreciated. I give up my evenings to record each video. Uh, each 15 minute video takes me about an hour and a half. Uh, I'm that inefficient at this. Um, so yeah, I'd very much appreciate any contribution you can give. Okay, thank you. And I will see you in the very exciting next video.